continue today with chapter 30, Changeless Reality. Appearances deceive, but can be changed. Reality is changeless. It does not deceive at all, and if you fail to see beyond appearances, you are deceived. For everything you see will change, and yet you thought it real before, and now you think it real again. Reality is thus reduced to form and capable of change. Reality is changeless. It is this that makes it real and keeps it separate from all appearances. It must transcend all form to be itself. It cannot change. The miracle is means to demonstrate that all appearances can change because they are appearances and cannot have the changelessness reality entails. The miracle attests salvation from appearances by showing they can change. Your brother has a changelessness in him beyond appearance and deception both. It is obscured by changing views of him that you perceive as his reality. The happy dream about him takes the form of the appearance of his perfect health, his perfect freedom from all forms of lack, and safety from disaster of all kinds. The miracle is proof he is not bound by loss or suffering in any form, because it can so easily be changed. This demonstrates that it was never real and could not stem from his reality, for that is changeless and has no effects on that anything in heaven or on earth could ever alter. But appearances are shown to be unreal because they change. What is temptation but a wish to make illusions real? It does not seem to be the wish that no reality be so. Yet it is an assertion that some forms of idols have a powerful appeal that makes them harder to resist than those you would not want to have reality. Temptation, then, is nothing more than this. A prayer the miracle touch not some dreams, but keep their unreality obscured and give to them reality instead. And heaven gives no answer to the prayer, nor can a miracle be given you to heal appearances you do not like. You have established limits. What you ask is given you, but not of God who knows of no limits. You have limited yourself. Reality is changeless. Miracles but show what you have interposed between reality and your awareness is unreal and does not interfere at all. The cost of the belief there must be some appearances beyond the hope of change, is that the miracle cannot come forth from you consistently. For you have asked it be withheld from power to heal all dreams. There is no miracle you cannot have when you desire healing. But there is no miracle that can be given you unless you want it. Choose what you would heal. And he who gives all miracles has not been given freedom to bestow his gifts upon God's Son. When he is tempted, he denies reality, and he becomes the willing slave of what he chose instead. Because reality is changeless, is the miracle already there to heal all things that change? and offer them to you to see in happy form, devoid of fear. It will be given you to look upon your brother thus, but not while you would have it otherwise in some respects. For this but means you would not have him healed and whole. The Christ in him is perfect. Is it this that you would look upon? Then let there be no dreams about him that you would prefer to seeing this. And you will see the Christ in him because you let him come to you. And when he has appeared to you, you will be certain you are like him. For he is the changeless in your brother and in you. 
This will you look upon when you decide there is not one appearance you would hold in place of what your brother really is. Let no temptation to prefer a dream allow uncertainty to enter here. Be not made guilty and afraid when you are tempted by a dream of what he is, but do not give it power to replace the changeless in him in your sight of him. There is no false appearance but will fade if you request a miracle instead. There is no pain from which he is not free if you would have him be but what he is. Why should you fear to see the Christ in him? You but behold yourself in what you see, as he is healed, are you made free of guilt, for his appearance is your own to you. From the workbook. What is the world? The world is false perception. It is born of error, and it has not left its source. It will remain no longer than the thought that gave it birth is cherished. When the thought of separation has been changed to one of true forgiveness, will the world be seen in quite another light, and one which leads to truth, where all the world must disappear and all its errors vanish. Now its source has gone, and its effects are gone as well. The world was made as an attack on God, it symbolizes fear. And what is fear except love's absence? Thus the world was meant to be a place where God could enter not, and where his Son could be apart from him. Here was perception born, for knowledge could not cause such insane thoughts. But eyes deceive, and ears hear falsely. Now mistakes become quite possible, for certainty has gone. The mechanisms of illusion have been born instead, and now they go to find what has been given them to seek. Their aim is to fulfill the purpose which the world was made to witness and make real. They see in its illusions but a solid base where truth exists, upheld apart from lies. Yet everything that they report is but illusion, which is kept apart from truth. As sight was made to lead away from truth, it can be redirected. Sounds become the call of God, and all perception can be given a new purpose by the one whom God appointed Savior to the world. Follow his light, and see the world as he beholds it. Hear his voice alone in all that speaks to you, and let him give you peace and certainty, which you have thrown away, but heaven has preserved for you in him. Let us not rest content until the world has joined our changed perception. Let us not be satisfied until forgiveness has been made complete. And let us not attempt to change our function. We must save the world, for we who made it must behold it through the eyes of Christ, that what was made to die can be restored to everlasting life. Lesson 241 This holy instant is salvation come. What joy there is today! It is a time of special celebration, for today holds out the instant to the darkened world where its release is set. The day has come when sorrows pass away and pain is gone. The glory of salvation dawns upon a world set free. This is the time of hope for countless millions. They will be united now as you forgive them all, for I will be forgiven by you today. 
We have forgiven one another now, and so we come at last to you again. Father, your Son, who never left, returns to heaven and his home. How glad are we to have our sanity restored to us, and to remember that we all are one. Amen.